As many of you probably already know, the long-awaited version 2.8 of GIMP was released this past week, and it comes with many important new features, um, some very highly anticipated, such as the um, single window mode, which I know many users have been asking for for several years now. Um, but GIMP 2.8 provides more than just an updated user interface. It comes with some other powerful new features, such as um, layer groups, brush rotation, the tagging system for resources, um, a new and improved text tool, an entirely new cage transformation tool, and some other important features. So in this video I'm just going to try to give a basic overview of some of these new features in GIMP 2.8 and uh, try to encourage you all to download it right away. So of course if you want to download GIMP 2.8 you want to go to the official website for GIMP which is of course GIMP.org and right here on the front page you'll see a big download button advertising GIMP 2.8 so you can go ahead and click on that and if you're using Windows you can come right here and download the 2.8 version of Windows through that link. I'm not sure if they have a Mac version yet but if not then they should have one soon hopefully of course if you're using Linux then they have directions for installing that through your, your distributions repositories. So go ahead and install that it should be pretty standard easy stuff just follow the installer it does all the work for you basically. But once you've installed it and I'll assume that you have done that already then let's go ahead and see what the program looks like when we start it up. So when you open GIMP for the first time, GIMP 2.8, you'll see um, this updated splash screen for version 2.8, which looks quite nice. Um, it might take a little longer than this to load the first time uh, you run it, but uh, it should open eventually. And as I mentioned before, one of the most notable features in 2.8 is the single window mode, but as you can see here, that is not activated by default. By default, we still have multiple windows in GIMP 2.8. And many users I know would still prefer to keep this multiple window mode, but if you are one of the many users who would prefer a single window mode, then you can access that quite simply by just clicking Windows, single window mode. And then you might need to move this around a bit, but uh, once you maximize it, you'll see that everything is nicely grouped into one giant window containing all of our tools, our tool options, um, our brushes, our layers, everything is organized into this one image window which is quite nice and probably what many Windows users especially would expect from a, a program like this. And you can see there are some other small changes to the interface such as uh, these little control widgets for adjusting opacities and things like that look a little bit different but I mean they're still basically the same functionality. You can slide the values like this you can enter the number indirectly, or you can uh, use the little arrows to change the values. So nothing too dramatic, but um, there are some other little changes to be found. So if you choose your brush tool and look in your brushes dialog, which should be over here by default, I think, then you'll notice that GIMP 2.8 comes with many new default brushes, which is quite nice. We still have the old brushes, like the Pepper brush, uh, the Sparks brush, but we also have these cool new brushes which have some nice textures and things for painting which can be quite handy for digital painters. So that's a good feature and um, if you're the kind of person who likes to download and install lots of extra brushes in GIMP then another cool feature is the ability to organize your brushes by tagging them with various labels or tags. For example you can see this brush that I just clicked on is categorized as a sketching brush and there's others up here um, which are media, there's texture brushes, and if you want to, for example, just see the brushes that are only the ones that are labeled as texture brushes, and you can just click this filter button and click to only show the texture brushes, and that's a useful way for navigating through all your brushes if you if you tend to have a very high amount of brushes in your in your GIMP dialog box, you might want to use that feature um, to help more easily find the brush that you're looking for rather than trying to navigate through a list of hundreds and hundreds of brushes. So that's a quite useful feature and you can add new tags to brushes by you know selecting the brush that you're looking at and then you can enter the tags down here that you want that brush to be associated with. Another feature is the ability to rotate the angle of your brush. So let me actually go back to let's say um, the star brush right here to show this a little better maybe. Increase the size of the brush. 
So by default, the star will be oriented like that, but if we change the angle, then we can see that the brush will be rotated. So this is a handy new feature for rotating brushes, and um, one of the cool uses of this feature is if you change these brush dynamics down here to track the direction, then GIMP will automatically change the orientation of your brush to match the direction that you're painting in. Another tool that has been updated quite nicely is the text tool. Um, if you click on your text tool and click on your canvas then and start typing, you'll see that we can actually edit our text directly on um, the canvas in GIMP 2.8, whereas in previous versions of GIMP, we had this extra little dialog box that we had to type the text in. So it's a little more convenient now that the text, we're directly editing it on the canvas, and we also have the ability to change the font and the size and the color of portions of specific portions of our text rather than try, than affecting the entire text box all at once. So for example, if I just select these letters here, I can change the font of just that portion um, to something like this. I can change its size, and then I can select another portion of the text, change its font to something completely different maybe. I can make it bold, I can increase its size a bit, I can adjust where it's positioned in terms of the height of that line of text, and I can also change its color. So this is a quite handy feature um, for editing text in GIMP, which we didn't have before. Perhaps my favorite new feature in GIMP is the ability to group layers together. This is really handy, especially if you're working on an image that has lots of layers. But, for example, this image here, even though we only have three layers, um, I might like to move these two chunks of text around, but keep them grouped together as a sort of a single chunk, even though they really are two separate text layers. So, I mean, we have the ability to link those together like this, which we even had in 2.6. But that only allows you to have one group of layers at a time. Any layer that has the chain link will be grouped to the same group. But now in GIMP 2.6, we can add layer groups by clicking this folder here. And you should be able to, although it's not going to work right now because my screen recorder program is uh, affecting it for some reason, but you should be able to drag each of these layers onto that layer group, and they will both become sort of sub-layers of this bigger, in a sense, layer which is a group. So if you add your two text layers to the layer group as I've done here, it should look like this, which you can do really easily by dragging and dropping the text layers onto the layer group icon. And this is a really handy feature because now these two layers are grouped together and um, we can still move them independently if we select the individual layers, but if we select the layer group icon up here, then we can move those two layers together as one block of text, which is really quite nice. Um, we can also collapse this a layer group to save space in our layers window, which is really nice if you have many, many layers in a single image, which is often the case. Um, so this is a really cool feature uh, just for keeping your layers more organized, and it's, it really helps a lot if you're working with a lot of layers. Another feature of the inter user interface um, in GIMP 2.8 with the single window mode is that if you have multiple images open at one time, then they will appear up here above your canvas as these tabs like this with little preview um, thumbnails, which is quite nice. So you can see if I click on this other image over here, it will bring that image to the front, and I can edit this image here. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate one last new tool, an entirely new tool which was added in GIMP 2.8, which is the Cage Transformation tool. And this is a sort of way of deforming um, a portion of an image by sort of selecting a, uh, a region around it and then deforming that region. So for example, if I select around the outside of this Eiffel Tower image right here, just really quickly. I've had some problems with this tool being a little a uh, little glitchy at times though, so um, hopefully they'll update a little more. But you can see I basically select the outside of it. It's not really a selection, but I define this cage around the outside of the, the portion of the image that I want to deform. And then I can drag these handles around and it will deform the image accordingly only that portion that I had selected here. So this is a, a cool new tool which may be useful um, in some situations. Uh, you can also see along with the new interface um, at GIMP is the this little preview thing that comes up to show you how how much time is left in the little calculation that GIMP is performing. 
So once you've deformed it to your liking, you can just like press enter to finalize that transformation, and you get something like that. So it's it's not a perfect tool. There's I think there's some bugs in it still, um, but hopefully in the future they'll have it a little more polished. But it, it's it is a promising uh, new feature that's very welcome in GIMP. The last new feature I wanted to mention about GIMP 2.8 is sort of a change in the way um, images are saved in GIMP 2.8. So if you have an image with multiple layers, for example this image here, then you actually have two options. One is to save the image, and the other is to export the image. So this before these two uh, modes um, uh, were, all, were combined into a single option called saving an image. But now the developers of GIMP have decided to separate the notion of saving an image with layers and the saving a flattened um, like image such as a JPEG or a PNG. So if you want to save your image and keep all of your layers, then that's what they actually call here as saving the image. And you would export this um, as a XCF image, which is GIF. GIMP's native format, which preserves all the layers, all the layer modes, and everything like that. And if you wanted to save it as a PNG image or a JPEG or something that you could upload to the internet, then that would actually be called exporting the image, because you're not really saving a GIMP image, you're, you're exporting it to some sort of outside format that you could use for other things. So you would just use this function here to export the image, and again, you would save that um, you can use a PNG or like a JPEG image or whatever. So those are two distinct options now, whereas before they were combined all into one. So hopefully now that they're separated into two different menu items, it might be a little, hopefully a little less confusing for new users who are not sure of the distinction between like all the different file types. So this really stresses the difference between saving image with layers and saving a flattened image. It might take some getting used to for some of you, but I think it, it is a, uh, uh, important distinction to make. And also I just thought of one other little thing uh, when I was mentioning layer modes a second ago is that the layer modes in, in GIMP now um, they were reorganized a little bit, still all the same layer modes but they were regrouped to kind of put together layer modes that have similar effects. So like for example all these layers here in general sort of darken the image. These layer modes up here generally lighten up an image. They're still the same layer modes, but they were just reorganized in this menu here to kind of put them in, into maybe a more logical order in terms of how they actually affect an image. That's another nice little change in GIMP 2.8, though it might take some getting used to if you're used to the order from 2.6. And that is it for this introduction to GIMP 2.8, so thanks for watching.